بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ السلام علیکم ٹو یو آل آن بہاف آف ڈی ایچ اے ایجوکیشن سسٹم آئی ویلکم یو آل ان مائی فزکس کلاس ٹو ڈے دس از ویک فائیو اینڈ اور سبجیکٹ کوڈ از فائیو زیرو فائیو فور ان ٹو ڈیز لیسن وی ول اسٹڈی اباؤٹ لینزز لیٹ اسٹارٹ ایٹ وی ول اسٹارٹ ایٹ ود اور ابجیکٹو اور ابجیکٹو آر نمبر ون ڈسکرائب دا ایکشن آف تھن لینزز both converging and diverging on a beam of light. Define the term focal length. The third one is draw ray diagrams to illustrate the formation of real and virtual images of an object by a converging lens and the formation of a virtual image by a diverging lens. Fourth, define the term linear magnification and draw scales diagram to determine the focal length needed for particular values of magnification. Fifth, Describe the use of a single lens as a magnifying glass and in a camera, projector and photographic enlarger and draw ray diagrams to show how each forms an image. Next, draw ray diagrams to show the formation of images in normal eye, a short-sighted eye and a long-sighted eye. Describe the correction of short sight and long sight. Let's start our lesson with the introduction of lens. What is a lens? Actually, lens is an optical device that transmits and reflects light, converts or diverges a beam. Lenses are made up of transparent materials like glass or plastic. Each of a lens, two faces is a part of a sphere and can be convex and a concave. If the lens is thicker at the end, thicker at the center than the edges, it is a convex lens or converging lens, as you can see in this diagram. Lens, since parallel rays be converged to meet at the focus. The second type of a lens is known as concave lens. A lens which is thinner in the center than the edges is called a concave lens. You can see in this diagram. It is also called as a diverging lens. Since rays going through it will be spread out. Lenses are commonly used to form images by refraction. We call them as thin lenses because they are not of very much thickness. We discuss about spherical lenses only. They are part of two spheres. There are two types of lenses as we have discussed earlier, converging and diverging. The converging lenses are also called as convex lens. As you can see, convex lens is thicker in the middle and thinner at the ends. Other one is diverging. The diverging lens is thinner in the middle and thicker at the ends. When the thickness of the lens is negligible, the lens is called thin lens. Principal axis. You should be very well aware of what is a principal axis. The line that goes through the two centers of the spheres or the paraxial rays are those close to the principal axis. The straight line passing through the center of the lens is known as principal axis. This dotted line is a principal axis of convex lens and this dotted line of um, concave lens is also a principal axis. Lenses are used in optical instruments like cameras, telescopes, and microscopes. There are many types of lenses. We have just discussed the two basic. The other types of lenses are bioconvex lens. You can see it has two sides of same type, so it's called as bioconvex lens. It is convex concave lens. It's plano -con convex lens. Plano convex lens, one side is plane and the other side is Convex. This is the simple concave lens is also called as bioconcave lens. Then is convex concave. One side is convex and one side is concave. The third one is plano concave lens. It's one side is plane and other side is concave. So the basic two type of lenses up to now we have studied are number one convex lens, number two the concave lens. Let's discuss about them. The lens which causes incident parallel rays to converge at a point is known as convex or converging lens. You can see in this first diagram, the parallel rays of light when they enter this convex lens, all of them start the refraction, the bending of the rays start is, starts in the lens. Be very careful in this diagram. They, all these rays will focus at one point, they meet at one point, that point is known as principal focus. And this point is also known as focal point. This 
This lens is thick at the center but thin at the edges. Now is concave lens. Another type of lens which causes the parallel rays of light to diverge from a point is called concave or diverging lens. It's called diverging lens because it spreads all the incoming rays of light. They are not actually going to focus at one point but they appear to be focused at a point behind the lens. This is its focal point and the distance from the center of the lens to the focal point is known as focal length. Now what is the difference between real focus and virtual focus? As we had discussed earlier, in converging lens or convex lens, the rays of light actually focus at a one point. That point is the focal point and this focus is known as real focus because in reality the rays of light are going to converge at one point. But in case of concave lens, the rays of light will spread outward and when we join them in dotted lines behind the lens, they appear to focus at one point. This is known as virtual focus as the rays of light are not actually focusing at a single point, but they appear to focus at a single point. So this is known as virtual focus. So always remember students, converging lens has a real focus and diverging lens has a virtual focus. Lenses and images. These three terms are very important to understand for making the ray diagrams from the lenses. The light rays that enter a converging lens parallel to ex at its axis bend to meet at a point called the focal point. I have told you the point where all the parallel rays after passing through the lens focus is known as focal point. The second is the distance between and the distance from the center of the lens to the focal point is called the focal length. Now this is the focal length from the center of the lens to this focal point. It is known as focal length. The focal length on, on the, both sides of the lens will be same. The optical axis. Optical axis is also called as principal axis as we have discussed earlier. As we have discussed earlier about it. So optical axis is also called as a principal axis, which is a straight line passing through the center of the lens on which we always mark the focal point that is F and the twice of focal length 2F. Here you can see that the converging and diverging lens, they can be considered as the combination of prisms. We have discussed prism. This is a triangular prism. This is a triangular and other all parts. Now the rays of light after refraction, they focus at a point. So always remember converging lens light intersects, converges and in diverging lens, the light spreads out. Now we will discuss the image formed by the con convex lens. These are the various ray diagrams which you will understand after this topic. But let's get a quick view of about it. The first, if the object is placed at a certain point from the lens, we always first draw the principal axis line and then we are going to draw the F and 2F. Let's start image formation in convex lens or converging lens. For drawing the ray diagrams of convex lens, you have to understand these three basic rays of light which will pass through a lens and where they intersect the images form. Now you can skip the one of these rays the, because the intersection of two rays can also give you the image formation. Now if an object is placed on one side of the lens, then first we will draw for, the, for drawing the ray diagram, first we will draw the lens <coughs> and a dotted line <coughs> and a dotted line passing through the center of the lens known as principal axis. Now the three rays are originating from the top of the object. The first ray is parallel to the principal axis and then after refraction it passes through the principal focus and then reach the other point. The second ray always, always moves <coughs> from the center of the lens. 
the third ray <coughs> the second ray passes through the center of the lens and whenever the light ray passes through the center of the lens it will not deviate it will go straight and it will intersect the first ray at some point at that point of intersection the image of the object is formed the third ray from the top of the object when passes through the principal focus and then from the lens it will move parallel to the principal axis line and in, and intersect at the first two lines now where these three rays intersect the image will be formed so for drawing the ray diagrams you have to consider three basic rules i am repeating them again number 1 first you have to trace a ray parallel to principal axis and it passes through the lens and then it passes through the focal point after refraction by the lens the second ray is the ray passing through the optical center this is the optical center passes straight through the lens and remains undeviated the third ray the ray passing through the focal point becomes parallel to the principal axis after refraction by the lens so let's discuss our first case when the object is placed beyond 2f or outside 2f now before that i i'm again going to uh, explain it to you that in the middle we have drawn this lens and instead of even drawing this lens we can draw a double headed arrow line double headed arrow here instead of this lens of the same height above and below the principal axis line the object is always shown in the form of an arrow for drawing the easy ray diagram the image is also shown by the arrow from the top of the arrow we start the rays we have discussed there can be three there are basically three rays but if we draw only two rays from the three also the intersection will also give give us the image the second thing if you see this straight line passing through the center of the lens this line is known as principal axis as lens is transparent and refraction can occur from both sides then it means that there will be a focal point on both sides of the lens which is at same distance and 2f here is actually the twice of the focal length from the center of the lens so it is f and again f it becomes 2f So let's start our first case when the object is placed beyond 2f. Students always remember when the object is placed beyond 2f or outside 2f, then the two rays, number one, parallel to the principal axis, and second, the ray passing through the focal point and the, then the lens, they will intersect between f and 2f. Where they intersect, you always draw an inverted arrow up to the intersection point. now this inverted arrow actually shows the image now the characteristics of the this image should be clear to all of you if you see in this ray diagram the object size is larger as compared to image size secondly the image is inverted after refraction from the lens the image of the object is inverted and third the inverted image is always real always remember guys we have discussed it earlier in last weeks in last week lesson also that the real image is always inverted so the characteristics of this image is that when the object is placed beyond 2f the image will formed between f and 2f it can form this image can form at any point between f and 2f and the characteristics of this image is the image is inverted inverted is always real and third one its size is smaller as compared to the object and we also call this smaller world as diminished now we will come to the case 2 the second case is when the object is placed between 2f and f when the object is placed between 2f and f then by considering the two rays of light one parallel to the principal axis and then after refraction passing through the lens and then it passes through the focal point and the second ray of light first it passes through the focal point and then through the lens so after refraction it will become parallel 
where these two rays intersect, we will get the image of the object. Now here it's very clear from the diagram that the object size is smaller than the image size. Secondly, if the object is between f and 2f, then the image always forms beyond 2f or outside 2f. And third, as image is inverted, so it's real. So the characteristics of this image is the image is formed beyond 2f. The size of the image is bigger or magnified and it's inverted and real. When the object is placed at 2f, this is easy case to remember. Always remember whenever the object is placed at twice of focal length from the lens. For example, the focal length of this lens is 6 cm and the object you have placed at 12 cm. So object is basically placed at twice of focal length. So the image will form also at 2f. Now in this case, when the object is 2f, the image will also form at 2f. The image size and object size both are same. The image is inverted and real. So the characteristics are of the image are images formed at 2f, images of same size, images inverted and images real. The next case is when the object is at f. When we place any object at the focal point of the lens, then when we draw the two rays of light, they go parallel to each other. So basically you can say that no image is formed because we cannot locate the image or it will, it might be formed somewhere at infinity, which we can consider. So we call this image as no image. So when the object is placed at 2F, the rays of light move parallel after passing through the lens and no image is formed. When the object is between F and the lens, when the object is placed between F and the lens, that is this blue arrow is the object, then the two rays of light, one is parallel to principal axis and then passes through the lens and after refraction it passes through principal focus. And second ray of light we can consider even with to the, uh, um, passing through the center of the lens. If we draw this line and if we proceed it backward, it might intersect somewhere here. Or even you can consider another ray of light. So at intersection of the two lines occurs behind the lens on the same side. So this type of image is known as virtual. And virtual is always upright or erect. And you can see the object, was, uh, object is of smaller size, but the image is of larger size. So what are the characteristics of the image here? Number one, the image is formed in front of the lens. The image is magnified or bigger, or it's upright and virtual. So if we consider all the ray diagrams together, then first case we have discussed about when the object is at infinity. When the object is placed somewhere at infinity, then the image is always formed at the focal point. Second case, when the object is at 2f, the image also forms at 2f. Third case, when the object is beyond 2f, the image is formed between f and 2f. Fourth case, when the object is between f and 2f, then the image is formed beyond 2f or outside 2f. Case five, when the object is at F, when the object is at F, we can say that no image is formed here. Last one, when the ob object is placed between center of the lens and the focal point, then the image will form on the same side of the lens. When we draw two rays, one passing through the center of the lens and other parallel to the principal axis, then our virtual image is formed. So these are the six cases we have discussed. <coughs> Let's discuss their uses also. In your textbook, they have shown you the object distance by small u and image distance by small v. We have discussed the different cases when the object is at infinity, the type of image is inverted, diminished and real. And basically, this type of adjustment is used in telescope. 
when the object is placed beyond 2f, it means the object distance is greater than 2f, then the inverted diminished in real image is formed and its application is in camera. In camera, we have the same adjustment that the object is beyond 2f, but the image is formed between f and 2f, okay? And the i, i has the same adjustment. The third, when the object is at twice of focal length, then the type of image is inverted, same size and real. And it is applied, this ad adjustment is applied in photocopier. The fourth one, when the object distance is between f and 2f, then the image is inverted, real and magnified. And this adjustment is used in projector. When the object distance is equal to focal length, when we place the object at f, then this type of adjustment is used in spotlight with upright, magnified and virtual image. And when the object distance is less than focal point, that is it, it is between placed between optical center O and F, then upright, magnified virtual image and it is used in magnifying glass. So basically all of these are the applications of lenses we're going to discuss. Image formation in concave lens that is also known as diverging lens. In concave lens, whenever the object is placed at any point, at f, 2f, beyond 2f, between f and 2f, the image always form on the same side and it always have the same characteristics that image is smaller, image is upright and image is virtual. We can see here the image characteristics of a concave lens when the object is between O and F, the image is formed beyond. Sorry, when the object is placed beyond 2F, the image is a very small image we will get between O and F. The image always you will get between O and F. The image is virtual, upright and smaller in size. In all these three cases you can see. So this is all the object location and the image description we have discussed and concave lens also image description and object uh, discussion. Next step is magnification. What is the magnification of a lens? Magnification is actually defined as the ratio of image distance to the object distance or the ratio of image height to the object height. So if in any image we, uh, in any ray diagram, if we measure the image height by scale or if it is given and we divide it by the object height, we will get the magnification of the object. Or we can take the image distance to the object distance and we will get the magnification. Here, HI is the image height, H0 is the object height. DI is the image distance, DO is the object distance. Now how we can apply the magnification in solving problems? For example, there is a question, calculate the magnification if a mirror produces an image of 40 centimeter from an eight centimeter sized object. Now we know the formula of magnification, that is image height over object height. We have image height as 40 and object height as eight centimeter. We will divide it 40 over 8 and our answer is 5. So it means the object image is magnified 5 times. So it, the image is 5 times larger than the object. In the last, we will discuss the applications of lenses. There are many applications of lenses in our daily life. We use magnifying glass, our lenses use spectacles, different type of lenses are used in it. Cameras, that is SLR and other cameras, again, lenses are used in it. Compound microscope, again, lenses are used in it. Telescope, there's also the application of lenses and binoculars. <coughs> First, we will discuss about the camera. In the camera, if an object, this is the whole diagram and image formation in camera. You have to remember this adjustment that when the object is beyond 2f that we got the same diagram in the camera that the image is formed between f and 2f 
okay now the object changes position its image will also change but it will always be between f and 2f so image in the camera always form between f and 2f you can see from here that image formed in camera is inverted real and always smaller since you cannot move the film to the location of the image you can focus by moving the lenses so the image falls perfectly on the film the movie projector in the movie projector we have the same adjustment as we have discussed earlier that when the object is formed between is placed between f and 2f the image will form beyond 2f so you can see a movie projector works almost opposite to a camera a projector takes a small object the film and projects a large inverted real image on the screen you can see here and because the image is larger than the object the film must be located between f and 2f also because the image is inverted the film the film must be loaded into the projector upside down so the final image appears upright the magnifying glass most of you have seen the magnifying glass it is basically what it's a big convex lens a okay, magnifying glass is a converging or convex lens the object must be located between f and the lens so basically you will place the magnifying glass near to the object so no real image is produced and at a virtual image is produced that is on the same side of the lens the refracted rays diverge but the brain extends these rays backward and produces an enlarged upright virtual image located on the same side of the lens as the object the last step of today's topic is about the application of lenses in correcting the defects of vision now what is actually what are the defects of uh, vision and how we can define it that is the inability of the eye to see the image of the objects clearly is called defect vision the defects of vision arise when the eye lens is unable to accommodate effectively if your eye is unable to see the objects clearly that object can be near to your vision or far away then we can call it defect of vision the images formed therefore are blurred so basically there are two types of defects of vision the first one is nearsightedness it is also called myopia so how you will define nearsightedness the people who cannot see distant objects clearly without the aid of spectacles then this type of defect of vision is known as short sight or nearsightedness it may be due to the eye ball being too long or light rays coming from distant object are focused in front of the retina and a blurred image is formed for a clear image the rays of light from an object should focus on the retina for the production of image in the lens so it can be corrected with the glass or contact lens that uses diverging lens what the diverging lens or concave lens do it spread the light light rays from a distant object are now diverged by thin lens before entering the eye to the observer these rays appear to come from a far point and they are focused on the retina they form a sharp image let's see the diagram of it now this is the diagram of an eye in which a person may be affected by a short sight the rays of light are coming from a distant object a parallel on it so when rays of light are coming parallel from a distant object then after passing through the lens of the eye they focus they are focused near the retina before retina not on the retina so the image formed here on retina is blurred so it can be con corrected by placing a concave lens before the eye lens so that it will spread the light rays a little and the image will formed on the retina another defect of eye is known as far sightedness this is also called as high hypermetropia it is the disability of the eye to form distinct 
images of nearby objects on its retina and is known as farsightedness. <coughs> the disability of the eye to form distinct images of nearby objects on its retina is known as farsightedness. Its reason is when a farsighted eye tries to focus on a book held closer in the near point, it shortens its focal length as much as it can. However, even if it, at its shortest, the focal length is longer than it should be. Therefore, the light rays from the book would become a blurred image behind the retina. It can be corrected with the aid of suitable converging lens. The lens refracts the light rays and they converge to form a, an image on the retina. To an observer, these rays appear to come from a near point to form a sharp virtual image. Let's see its ray diagram. When the light rays are coming from the near object, the image may form behind retina, but it should form a hair on retina with a clear image. That's why the image is blur. For this purpose, we use a converging or convex lens so that it will focus the light rays on the retina. This is a quick recap of the both sides defects of vision. This is short sight dot. This is a defective eye and this is normal eye. So when we place a concave lens in front of the eye lens, then the image will form on the retina. In long sightedness, when we place a convex lens in such a way that it will converge all the light rays on the retina, then it can correct the long sightedness. So let's take a quick recap. In the start of this lesson, we have studied about the lenses. That's a transparent material, which is going to, in which the refraction of light occurs, and it is used in many fields of our life. The, the two basic type of lenses are convex and concave lens. Then we have discussed the ray diagrams formed in the lenses. After that, we have discussed the magnification, which is the ratio of image height to the object height. In the last, we have discussed applications of lenses in which we have discussed about the magnifying glass, the camera, the projector, as well as the defects in the region. So thank you so much girls for listening this lecture attentively. Take care, Allah Hafiz.